Hello, hello. My name is Callista, and welcome to Life is Strange. This is an episodic game developed by Don't Nod Entertainment, and it was first released in 2015. We play as Maxine Caulfield, a young girl trying to uncover the mysteries of Arcadia Bay using her newly discovered time manipulation powers. I am very excited to get into this for a couple of reasons. One, it's episodic. I have a bit of a fondness for episodic games and it feels like ages since I last played one. I mean, the last one I would have had up on my channel yeah, it had to have been the final season of The Walking Dead, and I completed that almost a full year ago at this point, so it is high time that we had another episodic game on the channel. And um, secondly, Life is Strange... Life is Strange is one of those games that has been on my list of games I want to try out for myself, and I've always put it off. I don't know why, I can't explain it, but I always look at it and think, oh, I'll get to you eventually. I'll get to you eventually. And I just never did. So I am very excited to finally get my claws into this. Now, before we jump into new game, I do have a little something that I'd like to go over and it is important, so, so please don't skip this. If you are looking for a blind Let's Play experience, then thank you for checking out this video. However, this is not the let's play for you. I am not playing this blind. Whilst I've never played Life is Strange for myself, when the game first came out, I did watch a let's play of this, specifically Geek Remixes let's play. Now, here's the thing. It's been six years since then, and I haven't re-watched anything from this game. So, I'm sure there are some characters and some plot points that I will have forgotten. However, the overarching plot of where is Rachel Amber? What happened to her? Who happened to her? All of that I do remember. So yes, I am aware of who the villain is going into this. Um, I should probably also mention, I did also watch Geek Remixes before the Storm Let's Play and I believe it's just called the farewell episode, the final episode in the Life is Strange season one saga. Um, for Before the Storm, really, I only remember about 50% of that. For the main game, I'd say I remember maybe 70, 75%. For Before the Storm, I remember 50%. And for, to be brutally honest, for the farewell episode, the only thing I really remember is that Max and Chloe are dressed as pirates. And that's pretty much it. Life is Strange Season 2, that one's awkward. I'll explain that one when I'm about to play that game. But that one is kinda blind, kinda isn't, it's awkward. I haven't seen anything from True Colors. When I get to that, that will be a blind let's play. However, for right now, I'll say it again, this is not blind. If you are looking for that, then this is not the let's play for you. But thank you for checking out this video. Okie doke, with that, we are good to go. Life is Strange is a story-based game that features player choice. The consequences of all your in-game actions and decisions will impact the past, present, and future. Choose wisely. Max. 
Okie doke, I've got you all. Right off the bat, I... I know lots of people really dogged on Life is Strange for having really goofy animations, especially the facial animations. However, as someone who is very used to playing on potato graphics, and you know, I am playing this on the highest graphics I can, I, I think this looks really good. I think my new computer is handling this very well. Oh, that looks so cool. Look at that. Come on, chicken, up to the top. Holy shit. So surreal. Famously called film, little pieces of time. But he could be talking about photography, as he likely was. Okay, I'm in class. Everything's cool. Room. I am okay. From light to shadow, from color to chiaroscuro. Now, can you give me an example of a photographer who perfectly captured the human condition in black and white? I didn't fall asleep, and that Anybody? sure didn't feel like a dream. Bueller. Weird. Diane Arbus. There you go, Victoria. Now, I just Why want to listen to this for a because minute. Because of her images of hopeless faces, you feel like totally haunted by the eyes of those sad mothers and children. She saw humanity as tortured, right? And frankly, it's bullshit. Shh, 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 shh. Keep that to yourself. I love everyone gasping at Seriously, though, I could frame any one of you in a dark corner and capture you in a moment of desperation. And any one of you could do that to me. Isn't that too easy? Too obvious? What if Arbus chose to capture people at the height of their beauty or innocence? She had a brilliant eye. Mm. So she could have taken another approach. I have to admit, oh, I'm I, not a big fan like of her that. work. Look at this crap. How can I show this to Mr. Jefferson? I can hear the class laughing at me now. I think that was so sneaky of don't not sneaky in a good way, but putting Mr. Jefferson's motivations effectively like right at the beginning of the game, when most people are either gonna be so distracted by the dream sequence they've just experienced that they aren't gonna be paying attention, or, you know, they're either gonna be like, cause this is the first opportunity we have to really look around our environment and click on things. They're gonna be more interested in that. So a lot of people aren't going to be paying attention right there. That was very sneaky, don't nod. I approve. Um, I think this is a lovely photo. I, I don't see why people would laugh. I, I think it's perfectly lovely. Admittedly, if I remember correctly, this is the photo Max wants to enter into the competition. It's the, um, I think it's the Everyday Heroes competition. And I find it so interesting that Max has taken a picture of herself for that. I mean, if, if you have a, a positive or a negative opinion of Max, you could take it as two different ways. If you have a positive opinion, then I think that Max is trying to make a statement on how, you know, an everyday hero is just that. It's someone you would meet every day. It is all of us. It is the faceless majority. It's not whether you're wearing a uniform or, you know, because you were born with innate goodness. Everyone has the capabilities for great acts of heroism and compassion and all that good stuff. If we just take a minute to self-reflect and look inside ourselves and we can find that goodness. I think, you know, maybe that's what she's going for if you have a positive opinion of Max. If you have a negative opinion, then then clearly this girl has a raging ego. She's got an ego the size of the Eiffel Tower. And, you know, this is like, oh, me, 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 I, 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 self, self, self. 
However, the fact that she's facing away from the camera and she's blurred may be indicating on a subconscious level that she doesn't necessarily believe she's as good as maybe she likes to present herself as being. I find that interesting. I'd, I could go for either interpretation, really. Hmm. I prefer Robert Frank. Hmm. Me too, Victoria. He I can't believe I still have this pencil case. America. I should upgrade to the 21st century. The nice, cute. But I like it old school. The yeah, there's nothing wrong with you old You don't have school. beauty without a beat. My Which little camera bag is battered, but still kicking. Photographic muse. And both were the great chroniclers. I haven't kept up with my journal as much as I should. We've all seen that iconic shot of Kerouac on... If anybody else looked at this, what would they think? Oh, flipping heck. We're like two minutes into the game and there's eight pages of codex entries. Oh my days. Um, I should just warn you, this will be quite a slow paced let's play. I want to see everything. I want to read everything. I'm not just gonna skip ahead to the action sequences. So again, if that's not something you're interested in, then this might not be the let's play for you. Um, I... I can't read eight pages of codex entries in the first episode. It'd take up the entirety of the 30 minutes. So um you know what? I'm going to I'm going to read the first page and then in the next episode I'll read a couple more and then so on and so forth. Okay. July 10th, 2013. I got accepted into Blackwell Academy. If words could dance, this would be a rave. Even though I've never been to one. But who cares, because I got into Blackwell Academy. I didn't think I would be so excited since it's not like I didn't used to live in the same town. But when I saw the text from the Blackwell Scholarship Office, I could literally feel my pulse speed up. I thought it was going to say, sorry, thanks for playing. It took me a few seconds before I read the whole thing. I guess I wanted to enjoy that last moment of blissful ignorance. And when I saw the first word, congratulations, I think I screamed. My mom cried and my dad laughed. They're so weird, but they're happy and this means extra financial support because they don't have to pay anything to Blackwell. This means new clothes and if I can work it, a new laptop. Oh, and I have to keep telling myself in caps that I am going to Blackwell Academy. So, okay, so Max's family aren't, aren't mega rich. She needed the scholarship. It was a choice of, we either pay the fees and you have no clothes and no new laptop, or you get a scholarship and you can have some extra stuff to, to go with. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Good to know. Now then, hello. My name is Max Caulfield, and ever since I was a little kid, I knew I wanted to be a photographer. I've always seen the world through my own lens finder. Maybe it's a way for me to be a part of the world, but at a safe distance. For some reason, I was always drawn to old analog camera gear rather than digital tech. I love all kinds of styles and techniques, but for me, the instant camera selfie is the one I'm is the one I love the most. Excuse me. Also, there will be tongue fumbles. There will be tongue fumbles aplenty in this. There's a lot of talking. Okay, let's start this sentence again. I love all kinds of styles and techniques, but for me, the instant camera selfie is the one I love the most. I don't care if people make fun of me or not. I'm in great company, right? And now I've come all the way to my childhood home to study photography at Blackwell Academy, a private school for 12th grade seniors. I don't know what that means. I, we don't use a grade system in the UK. We have years and I don't, they don't necessarily correlate to grades in America. So I, ugh. I was kind of assuming that Blackwell was kind of like what we would call a sixth form college. So it, basically you have to be between the ages of 16 and 18 to go to a, a typical sixth form to get your A-levels. So I don't, I, I don't know what 12th grade means. I don't know what a 12th grade senior is. On a scholarship even, 
I originally left behind Chloe, my best friend forever, at least until I left without talking to her once in five years, and it feels so weird to be back here without seeing her yet. So I'm 18 now, an official adult, even though I don't always feel so wise and mature, and I'm ready to begin a whole new life here with retro camera at my side. Say cheese! Okay, so Max is 18. Again, I'm kind of like, I don't... I don't know if this is like some place for 16 to 18 year olds and this is Max's final year, or if it's for 18 to 20 year olds and this is Max's first year, or maybe it's just one year, you only come here when you're 18 and then you go, I don't know. I don't know, I can't really tell. Mm. Excuse me, next. Oh, hello you. Not only is Mark Jefferson one of the best photographers in the world, he's also my teacher, and one of the reasons I wanted to come to Blackwell. How often do you get to be mentored by one of your inspirations? I've always loved his deco and goth style, and he's so versatile with all of his incredible print and advertising work. Still, Jefferson can be a bit condescending. He's pretty hip for his age, but kinda aloof and sometimes pretentious. He has this smug smile when he thinks he's right. But I do think he's preparing us for how tough it is to be a full-time artist. He acts like he understands my own work and obsession with analog images. He really wants me to enter a photo in this Everyday Heroes contest, but I've done a good job of avoiding that. The winner gets to fly to San Francisco to represent Blackwell Academy and get national exposure. I'd like to think my work could be good enough to win, and I'm honoured Jefferson even bugs me about the contest. Oh, hello. This was one of my favourite characters in the Let's Play I saw. I absolutely loved this girl. I've forgotten if I've ever seen Kate Marsh smile or laugh in the past month. She's really sweet and nice, even though the other students make fun of her abstinence campaign. Even if they act immature, everybody at Blackwell are seniors, not high school freshmen. She gets a lot of shit, in fact. I know she's involved in a lot of religious groups, but she doesn't preach to me, so I don't care. But she's been extra quiet and introverted the past couple weeks. She looks like she's in zombie mode. I wish I could help her, but I can barely help myself. I wonder if all that bullying has worn her down. I can see how it would. I have to make an effort to talk to her more often. Maybe invite her to tea or a movie? Although I bet... I... My eyes just skipped ahead, excuse me. Although she's an adult, I bet she's not allowed to watch R-rated films. Who cares? That seems like such a snide thing to say. I don't know, maybe it's how I'm reading it, but that sounds incredibly snide. Like, who cares if she's not allowed to watch R-rated films? Let, let the girl do her. You do you, Kate. You're one of my favourites. And hello. Then there's Victoria Chase, the elite of Blackwell Academy and a total bitch, and I hate saying that. I just don't know why somebody who's so rich and beautiful needs to be so fucking mean. 18-year-olds at a prestigious academy should be evolving into artists and scholars, not reality show contestants. Victoria does everything for maximum drama. She actually wastes her time calling me out in class and taunting Kate Marsh. For reals, I wish her parents could see her in action. They'd cut off that trust fund fast. Then again, she's in the Vortex Club and they seem to own the school, so maybe that's why she doesn't give a shit. The odd thing is that she does know art and photography. She can even say all those French names that break my tongue. Her work is a little cold, but she has a good eye. She also has an eye for Mr. Jefferson, which is so obvious that I'm embarrassed for her. She does everything but sit in his lap. He keeps his distance, though. We can all tell she's trying to win the Everyday Heroes contest. I'm sure it drives her crazy when there's somebody she can't buy or seduce. Ha! Ooh. These two entries seem very judgmental to me. You know, we have we have her making these snide remarks about Kate, and then 
this thing, you know, Kate has this abstinence campaign and Max is, you know, like, oh, everyone's here, a, you know, everyone here is a senior, we're not high school freshmen. It's like, she's got an abstinence campaign, so what? She's not hurting anyone with that. As long, her, as, long as her abstinence campaign isn't running up to people and slapping the shit out of them saying, you're going to hell, you whore. Like, as long as it's not that, if she's just putting up posters, like, who cares? You do you. And with Victoria, this just reeks of jealousy to me. You know, like, you know, like, oh, she's so rich and beautiful, but she's so fucking mean. She's a total bitch. And I hate saying that. Do you, Max? Do you? Because you spend this entire thing slagging her off. You know, talking about like, oh, she also has an eye for Mr. Jefferson. I'm so embarrassed for her. Like, Max also doesn't have an eye for Mr. Jefferson. I, I get the feeling that Max is rather jealous of Victoria. I think she maybe took one look at her and, you know, just so, oh, she's a a pretty rich girl she's going to be completely vapid and personalityless and she's just she's just going to be you know a typical mean girl and then victoria actually turned out to be talented at photography and max was kind of like oh shit you know like she's still going to slag her off like her work's cold but she also has to admit she is actually pretty good it mm. I don't say that to diss Max, you know, everyone has flaws. And we're all a little judgmental and jealous at times, let's be honest. I will be role-playing Max a little bit because I'm a, I'm a role-player at heart. I enjoy doing that. I think I kind of want to play her as a bit of a people-pleaser. Someone who would really like to be popular and have a lot of friends, but I think she's also rather socially awkward and a little bit cowardly if you know what i mean if you want to be popular if you want to have friends then you have to have the confidence to put yourself out there and the confidence to be rejected you know that rejection isn't gonna get you down you're gonna hop right back to it and keep on you know traveling forwards and i don't think max is capable of that i don't think she What's the word I'm looking for? Not strong. I'm not trying to like, oh, she's too weak to deal with that. No, no, no. But like I said, I think maybe she's a little bit socially anxious. She's, you know, she's the kind of person to be like, oh God, I hope I don't get rejected. If I get rejected, then, oh God, I'll be so embarrassed and ashamed. I'll never be able to talk to that person again. You know, I, th I think she's a little bit like that. Now the, okay, that's that. That's a map, handy dandy. And the messages, okay. From dad, have a very special 18th birthday. You're an adult now, but you're still our little girl. Check your account, don't blow it all at once. And this was on the 21st of the 9th at 11.58 a.m. Okie doke. So Max has only just turned 18. Maybe Blackwell is for 17 to 18 year olds. Maybe it is just one year which seems rather strange to me. Surely you'd go, like, I think the minimum you should be going to a school for is at least two years. Just going for one seems a little bit pointless to me, but I, d I don't know. Kate, hello. Hey, Max, you around? Always, you okay? Did you want to get tea later today? Absolutely, I'll be free after four. Talk to you later. Oh, Kate. Kate, you are gonna be my best friend. I am determined. I am determined to make you my best friend. I love you. Mom. Happy birthday, Maxine. We can't believe it's been 18 whole years since you were brought to us. XO. Aw. That's lovely. And Warren. Hello. Do you want to meet for coffee after school? I need an excuse not to study. Please... Make sure you check out Necromantic on my flash drive. Mwahahaha. Hey, Mad Max, let's bust shit up. Wait, I have to study for a physics test. So if we bust anything, we also have to measure its velocity. Don't ignore this message. <laughs> God, I... This is rather creepy. 
you know, like, don't ignore this message. I'm like, Warren, that, mm, don't, don't ever send that. However, he keeps sending Max messages and she's not responding to any of them. It's, I feel like he's being creepy here, but I also feel kind of badly for him at the same time. Okie doke, I think. Falcon. There we go. And if you haven't, shame, shame. Okay, Capturing the romantic uh, urban solitude of the 20th century one, I poet. I do you love do. my analog camera. Now, I should take a quick picture now. Right in the middle of class. I should take Good a job, picture Max. to prove I'm still here. A true Renaissance man. And they have flash as well, you can't turn off. examples of that truly awful work. Shh, shh. I believe Max has taken what you kids call a selfie. A dumb word for a wonderful photographic tradition. And Max has a gift. Of course, as you all know, the photo portrait has been popular since the early 1800s. Your generation was not the first to use images for selfie expression. Sorry, I couldn't resist. The point remains that the portraiture has always been a vital aspect of art and photography for as long as it's been around. Now, Max, since you've captured our interest and clearly want to join the conversation, can you please tell us the name of the process that gave birth to the first self-portraits? Oh, God. <laughs> How the hell am I going to know that? I don't know anything about art or photography, so I am I am very much out of my element here. And it seems that Max is as well. Um, oh, I... I get the feeling that Max would want to impress Mr. Jefferson, or at least try to as much as she can, so I'm gonna go with I did know. I did know, but I kind of forgot. You either know this or not, Max. Is there anybody here who knows their stuff? Louis Daguerre was a French painter who created daguerreotypes, a process that gave portraits a sharp reflective style like a mirror. Now you're totally stuck in the retro zone. Sad face. Very good, Victoria. <laughs> the Daguerrean process brought out fine detail in people's faces, making them extremely popular from the 1800s onward. The first American daguerreotype self-portrait was done by Robert Cornelius. You can you know, find this out is all about him very in your textbook huh. or even online. And guys, don't forget the deadline to submit a photo in the Everyday Heroes contest. I'll fly out with the winner to San Francisco where you'll be feted by the art world. It's great exposure and it can kickstart a career in photography. So Stella and Alyssa, get it together. Taylor, don't hide. I'm still waiting for your entry too. And yes, Max, I see you pretending not to see me. Oh, hello. Okay, okay, I'm gonna I'm get to it in a minute. doesn't waste a second kissing ass. Oh god, I, I love how she's standing. So flirty. So flirtatious. Oh, Victoria, please don't. Please don't. Now then, hello. Now I wish I wouldn't have read this. Purge. Dear Kate, we love your porn video, XOXO, Blackwell Academy. That bitch! I don't know which one that was. The, the blonde girl with the bangs, like, you, you ho. How dare. Don't, don't be mean to Kate. To Kate is lovely. Hello. Kate looks so sad and quiet today. Poor thing. It is, it is now my duty in life to cheer you up. Hi, Kate. Oh. I also want everybody to know that this photographic mm. world is I hope I didn't anybody. embarrass you th oh, that the that Again, I don't know why I read I that as wrong. like, oh, I hope I didn't embarrass you, making it all about Max. No, we should we should ask her how she is. You seem quiet today. Just thinking too much. Oh, a distraction. T. I hear that. Wanna go grab a cup of tea and bitch about life? Thanks, but not today. I have to go over homework. No worries. Let's hang later. Sure. Oh, I I love you. You are my favorite. You are my favoritest favorite. Also, before I forget, I I just love I guess the set design of this room, shall we say? Because again, 
it says so much about Mr. Jefferson's character. The fact that, you know, he has all of these tables. And if you noticed, he was stood... No, no, no. Come on, face this way, Max. He was stood like that, facing these desks. And all over here was the guys and the women that, um... Clearly, Mr. Jefferson found not quite so attractive. And then over here, where he has all of the attractive women, or at least the people he finds attractive, all in easy viewing range. Oh, I... Mm. I love the storytelling there, the visual storytelling. Another daily fail in front of the world. Ah, don't worry, Max. It happens all the time. Obviously, Blackwell spent bank on the computers here. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a fancy private school. They, they do tend to have uh, nicer things. Looks like somebody was already working on this. Cool. Hmm, very nice. Where's, where, there's the mouse. Hello. We got a printer. Hello. That printer is amazing. I'd love to see how it reproduces my pictures. I could pump out a whole gallery show with that thing. When I don't suck. Someday. Hmm. Max clearly doesn't have much confidence in her work. And here's the thing. Th this is a prestigious private school. She must have talent. Otherwise, she, she wouldn't have gotten in. Let alone gotten in with a scholarship. A full scholarship. That's highly impressive. I love seeing Mr. Jefferson's awesome photos on these magazine covers. Mm, Popvine, is grunge dead? Featuring the latest works from Mark Jefferson. Ten reasons to get electronic mail. Okay, okay. That was amazing when Mr. Jefferson took a class picture the first week. Even though I didn't want to be in the picture at all, it was fairly fucking cool to watch him at work framing us. Mmm... Posing everyone, making them sit just so to his liking. Mm. Damn, they have carbon fiber tripods here. The ball head even has a pan lock. God, I'm such a photo nerd. Hey, being being a photo nerd is cool. Like you're you're passionate about a hobby. That that is always a good thing. So cool to see Mr. Jefferson's actual published pictures. Gives me hope. Hmm. Uh, Mark Jefferson's noir beauty. Film versus digital. Who will win? Yeah, and if you notice, all of the, uh, all of the professional pictures that Mark Jefferson has done, they all seem to be of, um, scantily clad ladies. I mean, the first one, she had, like, a jacket on, but she seemed to be wearing some kind of, like, bra top thing, so, mmm. Just, uh, again, another nice little detail there. This is definitely where cameras go to heaven. Hmm. Oh, man, they have those sweet ultrasonic lenses. And look at that vintage rangefinder. What? Okay, Max, okay, I'm sorry. I thought you were done then. Of course. Victoria has to have the bestest, newest, most expensive everything. Let's use it. Maybe we can break it. I should have known. She'll have better equipment than Blackwell. Ooh, look at that price tag. $5,299 for a camera. Oh my days. Let's see. Uh... GRLT-64s, with all the speed and power expected from a new greenlit, the GRLT-64s is packed with expanded features and manageability. It shoots what you want, where you want. Straight out of the camera, JPEG images already have a superb quality, including a new level of depth, sharpness, and malleability. Ooh! Damn! Flippin' heck. Even her school books are gift-wrapped. I can't believe she made fun of me in class. What is she, 15 years old? And people laughed. Well, clearly they found it funny. I mean, you did take a highly obvious selfie with a big chunker of a camera, Max. Like, you weren't exactly being stealthy. Huh, this might make a cool shot. Hmm. 
Oh, Rachel Amber forever. Oof. Hello. And here we have the collectibles. Okay. Hmm. I, I don't think I'm gonna get all of these, but I'm, I'm a gonna try. I'm a gonna try and get as many as I can. Okay. Uh, we can, we can just fix it. It's fine. Now then, we have these two. Um, you know what? I'm just about out of time. I'm going to explore the rest of the room and then at the beginning of next episode we'll have a chat with Mr. Jefferson. How about that? So cool that we can check these out anytime. The Decisive Moment by Henri Cartier-Bresson? That's rare. Annie Leibovitz, mad respect. The amazing Eugene Smith? Good to see Avedon among the masters. Dolly, of course. Lots of people I haven't heard of yet. I guess that's why I'm here. And so many of those names were people I've never heard of. Here's the poster for the contest. Mr. Jefferson really expects me to enter. Why? I don't know if I'm ready for my 15 minutes of infamy. Mm. Are you an everyday hero? Find out, enter to win. Everyday Heroes Photo Contest. Submit an image that best represents yourself or others in heroic action. Deadline, October 9th, 2013. The winner will fly to San Francisco and represent their school in the National Everyday Heroes Competition at the Zeitgeist Gallery on October 11th, 2013. You may submit only one image on approved paper for consideration for those 18 and under. A parent permission form must be included with the image. Considering that it was mentioned that Mr. Jefferson will be flying out with the winner, the fact that he's so interested in Max submitting a photo, it... Ugh. Whole load of nope. Man, he even has the best plasma HDTV for a class monitor. Can't wait to watch some more documentaries on this bad boy. Mm. Even in pictures, the forest around here always looks mysterious. That's nice. That's really nice. I'm very fond of, um, you know, landscapes. You know, landscapes in art or photography. As I said before, I'm not really a big art person. You can never escape the lighthouse here. Very nice. And hello. Whoa, Mr. Jefferson is not messing around with that monster. He probably paid 20 grand for that camera. I bet he gets pristine digital images. But I still dig my little instant camera. Hey, there's, there's nothing wrong with having a little instant camera. It's not the size of the camera, it's what you do with it that is important. Now then, let's let's go to that. Yes, I am going to bring this episode to a close right here. In the next one, we'll go have a chat with Mr. Jefferson. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.